great to be with you. Peter Balvis here, cardiologist. Now, a common test that we use often when we are assessing patients with possible heart issues is a stress test. Let's find out all about it. A stress test is a commonly performed test that looks at various aspects of your heart. Now, today we're going to talk a little about why we do stress tests, how they are done, and what information they may provide us. Now, a stress test is a test that we use to assess essentially how the heart performs with some form of exercise. And that is usually performed to evaluate whether there may be any disease or blockages involving the arteries that supply the heart. So if there are symptoms that we need to evaluate, if somebody has chest pain or chest tightness, or pressure, perhaps shortness of breath when pushing oneself up a hill upstairs, well, a stress test can be a very good way to assess for any possible blockage or problem involving the blood flow to the heart. Now, a stress test usually involves walking on a treadmill, although in some cases you may also get to use an exercise bike. But usually on a treadmill, and there is a very standardized program or protocol that we use when we're performing the test, and you'll find that each two minutes or three minutes, the treadmill will get slightly steeper and slightly faster. And that protocol is known as the Bruce protocol. But essentially, the test is supervised by a doctor and also a technologist. So there's often two people in the room. You will have the skin prepped initially to allow us to connect some electrodes or little dots for the electrocardiogram and they are positioned around the chest and around the, the tummy. And then you'll have a blood pressure cuff placed on your arm, and that blood pressure will be monitored periodically during and after the stress test. You will then be asked to stand on the treadmill. And for those who may not have experienced you know, how to walk on a treadmill, we can start it off at a very, very slow pace, just to allow you to take long, slow steps. And key is to just look ahead, look forward as you're walking on the treadmill and just try to make out as if it's a natural walk in the park. So that slowly builds up and over time we will increase the speed and the incline of the treadmill. And we monitor how the heart rate performs and equally how your blood pressure goes. And we can monitor also some additional information about the electrical activity that we detect from the skin and those electrodes on the skin that is giving us an indication of possible issues that may be present with the heart itself. For example, if there are changes consistent with a blockage or a narrowing that's impairing the blood getting to the heart muscle, well then that part of the heart muscle will often show us a deficiency uh, in, in blood flow and we can detect that on the cardiogram by looking at the change of something called the ST segment. And that gives us a very useful indication of how the heart is performing with stress and whether there may or may not be a potential problem. So there is no golden rule as to how long you will walk on the treadmill. We often encourage only walking or brisk walking rather than jogging, because jogging, although yes, we do see people who are so fit that they you know, have to jog, jogging creates a lot of movement, a lot of jumping around, and that affects the signal that we achieve from the electrocardiogram. But normally you will walk for several minutes on the treadmill, and the treating team there that will be asking you, how are you feeling? Are you feeling any chest pain? How's your breathing going? And the blood pressure is then monitored. And after you're finished on the treadmill and you reach the time whereby you know you can't do enough or you can't do any more, or we've achieved the necessary heart rate target that we want 
based on your age, then we will stop the test and then let you rest and recover. Often you're sitting down or lying down on a, on a bed and that just, you know, for, for about two or three minutes we allow you to recover and monitor how the heart rate improves with recovery. So there are various ways to achieve the information that we are aiming to seek and that is to look at the possible issues related to the heart muscle. And one of the simplest ways that we have in the more commonly performed test is using the ECG or the electrocardiogram. And that gives us a rather crude assessment of what may be going on on the inside by looking at the signals of the heart from the outside. The test accuracy may be slightly improved if we also include an additional test at the time that we are performing this stress test, and that is called an echocardiogram. Now, an echocardiogram is an ultrasound of the heart, so you may be asked to have what we call a stress echocardiogram. That test is similar to the stress test, whereby you will walk on the treadmill for a set, you know, for several minutes. We will exercise the heart and push you for as long as you can go. Uh, but this time, we take a picture of how the heart muscle is performing before you get on the treadmill and then immediately after you finish exercising. So there are three or four certain views that we take to look at how the heart muscle is performing at rest. We put you on the treadmill, exercise the heart, and then immediately after get you to lie back on the same, in the same position, often on the left side, taking a few breaths in and holding your breath. Very hard to do so once you've been running and walking on a treadmill, but it's very important that we look at the same picture that we did beforehand to compare the before and after. And that then allows us to identify whether there might be an area of the heart muscle that may not be contracting as vigorously as it was before you went on the treadmill. And that's essentially how we compare whether there may be a problem or not. Now, the stress tests do not look at the arteries of the heart. So they are not definitively telling us that there is a blockage and they're not telling us how bad the blockage is. They're giving us an indirect assessment of how the blood flow is working around the heart. And then by looking at that, we can often you know, extrapolate and su suggest that you know, there may or may not be a problem and that often needs further attention if something is identified on the stress test. Now the stress test is very, very safe. You are asked to wear very comfortable clothing. You are told often to fast for a couple of hours prior to coming in and avoiding stimulants like caffeine, tea, chocolate, smoking, and, uh, and alcohol, wear comfortable shoes, comfortable clothing that you can briskly walk on. And the test, as I said, is very, very safe. There are minimal risks. Obviously, you know, a few of the risks that we do outline is obviously when we are assessing people who might have a heart condition and we put them under stress, then there is a small chance that that can trigger off significant chest pain. That often settles down with some medicines that you know, the team will have on board available but there is a very small risk of developing or bringing on a heart attack. And that obviously means you know, urgent transfer to hospital to get that assessed. But for the most part, it's non-invasive. It looks at the assessment of how the heart muscle is performing. It's often very, very simple to perform, but does take a little bit of getting used to negotiating the treadmill and the physician and the doctor can often give you the results then and there and suggest whether any further tests may be relevant for you. So there is a different type of stress test that is a little bit more involved that you might have heard of called a thallium scan or a perfusion scan or a nuclear scan. And we'll have a separate video on what that type of scan is and how that dif is different to the traditional stress tests on a future video. So hopefully you found that useful. Thanks again for all the support of the channel. Until the next video, bye for now.